Hello everybody, my name is Trailmaker. This is Clash of the Clans 2, and we have a forward four match. Uh, first we have playing as NATO, the SKD clan. And their opponents playing as Pact, we have the WTF question mark clan. Representing SKD, we have Salamander, Mattis, Zuelda, and Major. And for the WTF question mark clan, we have Random, Spectre, Dirty D, and Skydrake, trademark. So, uh, this is going to be on Uppsala, very popular map. And this is round, I tend to say three, but then there's that kind of half bracket there, so it could be considered four. We'll just call this round three of the main rounds anyway and this course is conquest mode which has become the standard mode from the game it's official it is now standard and because these commands are very very important also we have one two three commands not too many uh this map of course is kind of a a, a five command minimum start because you have one two three four five and then you fight off for the middle. So hopefully they'll pound in some more commands here. Well, let's be soon. They do have interesting choice, a command helicopter, of course. They're only 100 points. They do travel a, a little faster if you give them a start like this. And they're also very mobile, so they can do some cutesy, cutesy things, like fly over here, grab this location, so then when the attack comes in, there's no reinforcements. So there's not a lot of amazing things you can do with uh, a command helicopter power, so that's kind of problematic. Uh, looks like loadouts are mostly done. Let's see where the commands are here. One, two, three, four. Is there a fifth one here? Five, and looks like they hit their minimum here. Uh, WTF has five commands. And how do they lay down five commands? It looks like a little bit. See, I usually start off putting down commands. I don't know what other people, but I put down the Number of commands are going to put in the game right off the bat. So one, two, three, four. It looks like they're going to go one less, which means they will have a higher unit count. And if they can make that worthwhile, it will work. Um, basically, in order for this to work, all these forces here have to get over here into these two locations. And then after the fact, they'll reinforce and grab possibly this Lima base here. And then they should be able to grab Echo and Fox Trial. That's assuming, of course, that they can be successful in their pushes. That's one big thing. Uh, note, though, there will be some airborne infantry here for WTF. They have, um, actually, I stand corrected. They do not have any airborne infantry at all. This is absolutely bizarre, actually, because airborne infantry has become such a standard in the game that not having them is just weird. And, they're using a lot of very tank heavy units actually going for the T-80Us, T-64s, has two tank destroyers here, the Shallows. Uh, yeah, this is absolutely bizarre and look at this, a Uragan, one rocket based artillery, and two BM-21 Grads, two other rocket based, so three rocket based artillery, very expensive start. Uh, I have to see what the method is for this madness because I know a lot of teams that practice a lot have really uh, planned out some cutesy things with napalm and rockets. That gets really weird. It shouldn't be too effective, however, because we're looking at mostly airborne units here. Lots of helicopters that will be making the original push. And there's not a ton of cheapy infantry here. And by that, I mean one-point carriers with infantry in them. There's just not a lot of those. So we'll have to see how this goes, uh, how this will pan out. Oh, I love the ripple of the ocean. So beautiful this time of the morning. And it's later in the day for you, evening or night. It kind of ripples all day, actually. I live next to the ocean. It's not that majestic. And right off the bat, we have a Phantom. That's going to be our Napalm, Tomcats. This has become basically the standard play. You have air superior vehicles coming out to escort your Napalm deliverance. Napalm will drop on top of a road, hopefully, towards the middle location. And he will completely be sacrificed, but if he can hit the road, which he does in fact do so, it's made worthwhile. Now we have a counter napalm here, and keep in mind, I, I, by counter napalm I mean they actually napalm exactly the same. This is opener has become standard for all of play. 
if you're learning to play the game, make sure to get a Napalm Bomber Yak for the Pact. And, uh, yeah, always do this. This is basically good standardized play. Originally seen as being kind of cheesy, but it has kind of opened up to being very, very good. So it looks like Adult Force has been deployed into this Echo base, so they will, in fact, be able to secure Echo, which is very, very good. And now it's all about, can they get this forward box shot location? It looks like they've stopped their the Royal Marines just a bit short, not going for that. And they have some air anti-air helicopters, sorry, coming in here, these OH-58Cs, which will clip the one scout. And looks like it's a pretty fair trade, however. And, ooh, looks like these guys are going through a napalm here. And these guys actually, both going to Napalm, both actually wanting to get to this middle location. And this is one of the big things, like, if you don't do this Napalm build, the other team will be much, much better off. Now right off the bat, Napalm has been dropped into this base here, and it looks like we're going to see a pretty major skirmish happening from the middle. Numbers of infantry are on the side of WTF, and it looks like WTF going to get a pretty early lead here, plus three, and this is where the command values come in right now. We have one here and one here, a little bit of a... A mistake because they don't have the two point base so it looks like we're gonna see some pretty early bleeding here from uh, SKD as they're potentially in a lot of trouble they'll need to get a command out right away to stop that bleeding now down to one point so it looks like they've gained one extra base somewhere and never mind golf has just been taken and a lot of team play has come down to this big air superiority elements if you can get this early early air superiority you can drop off as many of these bombs as you want and this is exactly what they're going for dropping off insanely high amounts of bombs trying to hit random locations just trying to get the commands and actually gets a hit off 50% health on that VAD PC and he has four cluster bombers there in a line one here one here one here one here and this is also so common you stack up your air units to do this in this weird wonky world it ends up being pretty worthwhile to sacrifice one or two bombers in order to kill a command and and so we're seeing some infantry up top being dropped on top of this location and actually able to clean it completely out. This is signaling some very, very bad times are ahead for SKD. They have some tanks moving up the side. There is a TADU here defending, which is clipping with these amazing reflex rockets. Here we have a phantom bomber drop some napalm on this location that completely gets them all. Stuns all around, modus strategies. Look at this. Our artillery fire is just doing damage. Even get some of the helicopters that grounded themselves. And this flank is suddenly going to go to WTF in a pretty unmistakable situation. That absolutely looked like it was gone to SKD, but no, things have changed. On the side flank here, we see that BTR Shallows are moving up along the side flank, trying to pressure this zone here. This course is a reinforcement point, and if they can knock out this road here, this is impossible to reinforce. And by impossible, I mean very, very difficult. So they have to go a very, very long route. And this, of course, is the easy route around. So, of course, WTF we want to try and stage themselves right in front of this little tunnel here. Everything moves outside this tunnel. They get outside that tunnel, they're in the gold, and they're actually cleaning out a lot of units here. So, SKD in a lot of trouble. This is the winner's bracket, so no one's losing forever here. It's absolutely possible that SKD could go to loser's bracket today, and WTF will continue on. Battle for the Middle Hour is looking kind of good here for FKD, and so they do have a chance. They need to get a command out very, very quickly, though, and so far they're struggling. They hold on. Speaking of which, here's the command that I was speaking about, Italy. Uh, so, basically, SKD can put a command right here and get the plus one, but in the long term, they need to clean up this area. They absolutely need to clean up this area, need to get this main road working, so that they can do something, and oh my god, WTF has actually secured this one point echo base, and suddenly things are going very, very badly. There are lots of marines in the middle, they will impact clear all these modal strategies, but they need to get those precious commands out. In fact, this command hasn't been stopped yet, it's still continuing on, trying to find the safest location, and the bleeding will continue. Uh, BTR Shallow in the distance is going to do some crazy amounts of damage to these Leopard 1A. I and O. These are like a weird one, yeah. They're like Norway's tank. Very, very, very strange named tanks. And here comes another tank bush, unable to clean out this location. Uh, or sorry, to secure this location. SKD will, in fact, be able to push through and completely reinforce this route. Now, there is some conquerors in the woods here. They will have to pick these out. 
And after that, they'll be able to reinforce this road. They'll be able to put a command here and potentially move into this base. Now, this pox shot base in the middle has a, a stronger strategic importance compared to this echo base because this fox shot base can go down this road to hit here. It can go straight down that road, go for the main base. It can go down the delta road to this base. It has lots of avenues of attack. It can go down this road. There's, there's tons of stuff you can do with this middle base once you secure it. It's a huge crossroads in the entire map. Speaking of which, this huge, huge push-up has happened here. And so this Lima base will have to get, be defended somewhat. So far, it's only a single Revetka, which, as far as I can tell, is completely invisible right now. Uh, some rockets will, in fact, get wasted on these u -rolls. Not wanting to waste these. This is going to cost just a little bit of supply as he's throwing away his empties. And actually, this causes immediately the WTF plan to throw some cluster bombs and might actually get a command here. Oh, cluster bombs, wrong locations! Just barely missing everything uh, but the road that guy is in position now it should be able to move up there's also a Bradley CFE coming up of course is a very very deadly recon uh, in European escalation this was kind of the bee's knees of vehicles like everyone wants to have one of these because they're just so good it's a tank that has recon why wouldn't you not want that very very balanced near land battle uh, battle from the middle will continue while looks like we're gonna see some uh, napalm and of course this become the most popular use of the team on the game Keep in mind, there's now four very, very expensive um, artilleries on the map right now for the pack players. Very, very heavily artillery in, in, sorry, invested. <laughs> and yeah, they're just going to try and burn it at these numbers best they can and slowly stage in some modal strategies, which can be a small progressive play. And they can do small progressive because honestly, they're ahead. Looks like. Trying to get a spet snats board to try and do some spotting position. Of course, if you can get a spotter, you can actually put some AT vehicles. And I'm not even sure if they even have AT vehicles in their deck. Not very popular, but you can use AT vehicles for this spot and just hit from the long distance. A lot of very cheap, cost effective ones to do this with, specifically if you're a pack player, but really good for your NATO as well. And here comes another napalm, able to strike. The entire village. So these assault engineers should pretty much all die. The patents are going to get pulled back, and the assault engineers are getting pulled out, which is kind of close to a mistake because it means they're very, very vulnerable. Luckily, there's nothing here to hit them, so they should be mostly fine. As the patent will also clear some or most of the fire. And oh god, this artillery fire and barraging and this bombing has been so effective. T-64 is pulled back, realizes like, oh god, it's a Bradley CFV run. But the Bradley CFV actually able to get two kills right off the bat. Now BMP-3s have some crazy range, but oh my god, it's like nuclear bombs went off. Speaking of which, my dogs are humping each other right now. If you're wondering that groaning noise, that's love. Doggy love. Here comes a Tomcat, going to try and pick off something. Oh my god, he gets intercepted by Megs, but... Somehow able to pick off one himself and get away. That's absolutely insane. And another Meg will go on to AA. Ooh, air dominance might be shifting relatively soon. We could potentially see an SKD come back. They do have to stop the bleeding, though. They have to stop that hemorrhaging. They have to get a command in here. No, there's 30 Moto Strelikis and 10 Spetnazes that have magically moved through this area. Now, keep in mind, they can move up this rock face. And they came right in here. Just walked right in. And they'll continue through. Now, if they can actually get into the woods location here they might be able to actually push this command out and that's a pretty important reinforcement point without this reinforcement point they cannot reinforce this forward line and the spetsnaz course is trying to get away the moto strategy also trying to move forward he wants the spetsnaz as a spotter and he might be trying to run to one of these towns he wants the moto strategy to kill looks like the moto strategy are caught though they will not be able to get this done and uh, yeah, a little bit of a failed attempt there by random. Absolutely everything targeting it should be mostly fine. M1 Abrams might pick off a free BTR 60 PP. Yes, it does. Absolutely free. Now, these woods, of course, are kind of creepy here. And by creepy, I mean you can creep on in. Spets and that's going to move around the side here, move along here, and provide spotting vision to kill the command here. And of course, spotting vision also important in a game where there's air fixed wing aircraft because you can drop a bomb on top of it and just kill it. I was being wished Spetsnaz got completely caught there. Motostrokies will in fact go liberated 
and this push through the woods here might just be very too effective. The command here has been destroyed. It was spotted and destroyed by a bomber, and now there's an air unit here. Now the problem with these helicopters is that it, they can get targeted down by AA, which is pretty bad. It and A T and uh, ground units when it's on the ground. So it becomes really cost and effective pretty fast when they can just throw a whole bunch of air superiority fighters or an AA helicopter or anything along those lines at it. Speaking of which, oh my god, reflex rockets. This is one of the few times in the game where range becomes insanely cost effective. It's when you have that one unit that's maximum range. He can just pick off every single unit in the distance, and that's exactly what he's doing. The M1 Abrams both going to move up now. TADU has completely blown up payload, though, and oh, get some more expensive Abrams. That's good. Moving up into these Conquerors, however, that's not good. That is not good at all. Will pull back, but will he lose in time? Just barely misses. And in fact, here's another random little payload when you drop on TADU. Only two hit points left on this, but it barely survives. So I guess Spets not going to take down a Chinook. That's unusual if that happens. Only one hit point left, and US Marines do get deployed, however, which is huge. The Chinook will go down, but the Spets of course, could go down as well. Okay, these nuclear bombs are blowing my mind, people. Stop blowing my mind. Uh, speaking of which, US Marines actually probably going to go down, though. That's actually kind of shocking. It's amazing what a little bit of support will do. Now, all the while, this base has seemingly been cleared out. Um, looks like they moved the command to India because they lost it to random bombs. Yes, they lost them. Oh my god, that was huge. That's crazy. And the, and the, the helicopter, that's gone too. So this is a really big problem. The random bombers have actually been super, super effective. Now, of course, to stop these bombers, you actually have to have forward air position. And that's something that SKD doesn't have. You need to stage anti-air like right here. If you want to stop a bomb that's going to hit right here. Or, you know, for here, you need to be up here. And, and uh, that's really hurting. These flanks have hurt quite a bit. And this is just going to cause a continued forward push up in the TADUs. Pick off the remaining assets. And they'll also be able to move up this bridge road here. And go and strike in from the side flank. As well, they can move in another command and continue moving ahead. They're already at 70%. They might be doing the perfect storm here, the perfect race, and they might actually be able to take this all for little to nothing. Phenomenal after here from WTF, actually using a ridiculous amount of artillery. Here's three more mortars on the map, so that's 10 artillery units on the map total for, for WTF. Might be trying to shift the metagame just a little bit here by switching to a higher artillery, because of course artillery are very good against vehicles and the infantry that are usually within them, so that's something. And gone very heavily with this um, uh, attrition-based play using a lot of aircraft, even using AA aircraft to pick off the units, uh, wiping out as much anti-air as possible. Here comes a Nighthawk, not really able to do much damage, gets a stun on this command here, not too much. And yeah, this match is over. Looks like I will be officially declaring WTF will in fact move on to the uh, semifinals. I think it's the semifinal round of the Clash of Clans. Um, it could be quarterfinals. I'm not sure how the loser bag works out just yet. It could be quarterfinals. Um, if it's quarterfinals, cool. And of course, SKD will be moving into the loser's bracket. Um, I can't tell you who they'll be facing. I assume by this point the quality of the talent in the loser's bracket will be quite high, however. And uh, we could see them again, absolutely. Um, obviously a huge misstep by not taking this two-point base early on. Huge misstep by not securing this box trout location while his opponent secured the echo base. Lots of mistakes being made all around. Lots of stuff to learn from. And the beauty about lo of losing is that you can learn from your mistakes. If all you do is win, <laughs> you can't really improve too much. You have to lose a bunch. You have to be showing up a little bit. Otherwise, you're going to do the exact same thing that worked for you. And these Daks are trying to be a little bit sneaky here. There's not a ton of air here. And note the micro. He, he came here, hold the shift button, right click here, right click here, right click off the map, and 
right click at the location where he thinks the command is. Now he did order the evac just as these Tomcats showed up and we'll lose both of them. But that's kind of how that's done. As my dogs are now done making love. The small one is smoking a cigarette. And the big one is crying himself to sleep. This is the love making of dogs. Uh, yeah, speaking of which, I don't know where that happened. Suddenly we're at plus three. Oh, the hotel base has been retaken. Uh, of course, a little bit too late. Too little too late, of course. Uh, my name is Trailmaker. If you enjoyed this, you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. Like the video. And uh, definitely share to your friends. There's lots of good stuff to learn here about tactics. This is the new main game mode, so it's not going away. And, uh, yeah. Stay tuned. I have more matches in this channel coming up almost every day. I'm also covering ESL every single week. I'll be trying to cover minimum finals, but also try to get into the semifinals by the time. Thank you guys for watching.